This is our tutorial for using PiscalApp.com to create animated pixel art. When you first navigate to the page, you're going to start by signing in and then use your GMHS email account. You can see I already have an account. Here are a couple of animations that I made for practice, but you're going to create the sprite and that will bring you to your blank canvas. Much like the other programs that we've used, anytime you hover over a tool, it's going to show you a little pop-up that tells you what that tool is and what it does. So if you ever forget what something does or you're not sure what something does, just hover over it and it can let you know how to use it. The first thing I want us to notice is how large this canvas is. So if I come over here and resize, it will show me that it is 32 pixels tall by 32 pixels wide. And you are going to keep those settings as they are unless you have a special reason to change them, in which case, ask me first before changing it. For this project, you can create an animated GIF of really anything you want within reason, um, but it does need to have some requirements. So it needs to have a background and a foreground. So it needs to have a, an object with a background behind it, and it needs to have at least three different moving parts or animated parts, and I will show you what I mean. For my example, I'm going to be using a fish in the ocean. That's what I'm going to illustrate for us. And the first thing I need to do is create my palette of colors. So I'm going to come over here to palettes and click the plus sign to create a new palette. And I see that it already has black, which is a great color to include. I am going to keep that and then hit the plus sign. That gives me a new color. And my fish is going to be a green color. And I'll get a dark green and then hit the plus color and make a lighter version as well. And I can get some blue for the water behind and so on. So I've set some colors and once you have the colors you want, you can go ahead and name your palette. I'm gonna call it fish and then save the palette. You can always come back and add more colors later if you want to. So for my animation, I'm going to start with a background. This fish lives underwater. So I'm gonna make my background blue and add some kind of beige sand underneath. I am coming over here to the paint bucket tool and I'm choosing a base blue color and filling the whole thing. There is blue. And then I can use the pen tool and come to my lighter blue, set it at one point, and maybe I will just put some little bubbles or other shapes like that. If I don't want it, I can always erase it. I'm not sure how I feel about those. I can use my eraser tool and make it larger and get rid of them. Oops, that was not the right choice. <laughs> Fill that in with the paint bucket on the correct color. I'm just gonna leave my water plain for now and I will rename that layer water and hit enter to change the name. Now I can add a new layer. I hit the plus sign. And I have a new layer on top of the old water layer. If I click back to water, I can see it again. But here's layer one. I'm going to rename that and call it sand and hit enter. And I'm going to draw some sand in there. So I just went ahead and drew a little sandy ocean bottom. And just to show you how I did this checkerboard kind of gradient effect in the middle, to do that, I used the dithering tool, which is right here. The dithering tool just makes a checkerboard pattern between the foreground and background colors, the primary and secondary colors. So you can experiment with that as a way of creating shadows on your character or your design. So now that I have my sand layer, I'm gonna go ahead and add another layer, and this is going to be my seaweed. And just for grins, let's add, oops, I forgot to hit enter. Yeah, if you type the layer name and you just click away, it won't save, you have to hit enter on the keyboard. And then my last layer is going to be the fish. So going back to my seaweed layer, I've got my colors in the palette for here, the green that's light and the green that's dark. And I'm gonna start with my pen tool again on the one point size and just start drawing some kind of long curvy seaweed pieces. Curvy is very relative when you're talking about pixel art. It's just a little bit of back and forth. And you see I'm clicking it one square at a time because if I draw like this, it's gonna make a line that's probably thicker than I want it to be if I wanna have any kind of sense of shading or depth.
So I drew one seaweed, but I think that the light green is a little lighter than I want it to be. So I have two options to change that. One would be to use the lighten or darken tool. So over here is this lighten tool. If I hold control and shift, it lets me darken each pixel once. So I can go like this. Oops, I clicked on, I did not click on the tool. I was still on my eraser. There, if I go like this, it just darkens each of those a little bit. And that to me is a much nicer, more subtle transition. So that is one way of changing it. The other way of changing it would be to change the color on here or in my palette and then grab it into here, make it more what I want it to be. And then use the paint all pixels of the same color tool. And I could click there and it will turn all of those the color I want them to be. I drew a second seaweed and I want to move this seaweed down a little bit though, because I don't like how high it is. So I can't just use the move tool because if I do that, it's going to move both of them. But what I can do is use the rectangle selection tool to grab this part. And then if I hover this, it shows if I hold shift and click, then it'll move. And I hit enter to get out of that. And I'm going to draw one more seaweed and then we'll start on the fish. Now I'm going to switch over to my fish layer and grab my purple colors. I decided to make a purple fish. So there's my dark purple and my light purple. I'm going to start with the dark purple to make an outline for the fish. I want to show you the vertical mirror pen tool. So this tool, if I'm making something symmetrical, I can click this and I'm going to draw my fish standing up and then I'll just rotate it so that I can show you how to use this vertical mirror pen tool. So this lets me make something totally symmetrical like a fish. Now that I have it, the outline drawn, I can go over here to the rotation and turn it the way that I want it to be. And I can fill the rest of it in with this lighter purple using the paint bucket tool and add a little bit of shading using the dithering tool on a small size. And now I've finished my fish. I did a little drawing, I added an eye, some fins, and we're ready to start animating it. Ooh, so exciting. So over here are my frames. And then up here is my preview of the animation. It's gonna default to showing it at one time. You're really not gonna be able to see this. So you wanna hover over this and change it to six times. And you can do that even earlier than this while you're drawing, it would be a good idea. And you can even open it in a pop-up pop window. And then this gives you the option to onion skin. That is going to show you the frame that you just drew underneath. So you can see where you're positioning something in relation to the previous frame. And over here, I can duplicate my existing frame so that it has itself again. Uh, that was a terribly phrased sentence. Just ignore that I'm rambling. Once I've duplicated that frame, I can go to any one of my four layers and use the move tool to move it. A little bit and now I can see my preview it, this fish is wiggling back and forth so I'm going to do that a bunch of different times to make it look like the fish is swimming across the screen so I'm just duplicating there and then going back here and moving it over one duplicate up here to move it this is going to have a lot of frames but that's okay it'll give it some smooth movement oops I have to go on this one it I am faster at this than you will be. It takes a little while to get used to it, but it's actually not that complicated once you figure it out. And the whole time I can see my preview up here. Before you start animating, you wanna be absolutely certain that your illustration is the way you want it because you don't wanna to have to go back and change every one of these frames because you just changed your mind about a color or something. Like it's not gonna happen at that point. So now I have finished animating the fish swimming across the screen in a straight line. I can see in my preview here that it is, oh, it's flickering on the preview for some reason, but I can see that it is swimming, it's moving across the screen. There we go, not flickering anymore. And there he goes, look at that. Now, I also wanna animate the seaweed and I'm gonna show you how to do that, how to make it look like it's wobbling. So if I go to the seaweed layer and then I can see all my seaweed in the you know, 45 or whatever, the 65 different frames that I have going just to get the fish across the screen. And I can turn on my onion skin. 
So if I go to the next seaweed panel, this is frame one, here's frame two, I can redraw the seaweed just slightly in a different location. So there are a lot of different ways you could do this, but I am literally just going to erase what's there and use the onion, onion skin feature to see what I am comparing it to and slightly alter it in my drawing. Now that I've finished drawing my kind of slightly altered seaweed, I want to see how it looks as an animation with the first panel. So I've taken my preview down to zero frames per second, so it's no longer playing, and I can just click back and forth between those two. And I really like that. It's got just a little wiggle, so I'm going to make every other panel be this new design by copying and pasting it in. I'll use the rectangle selection tool to draw a selection around my whole canvas. and hit control C. Now I come over to this layer and hit control V. Oops, I have to get rid of the stuff underneath first, my bad. I will erase it and then hit control V. And I'm going to do that on every other layer, every other frame. Looking at it on the preview, I think every other frame is too fast, so I'm actually going to do two frames in one position, two frames in another position. So now I have my wiggling seaweed and I have my swimming fish, and there are other animations I could add. I could add some bubbles floating across, I could add an eye blinking, whatever you want to add. Um, yours does not have to be a fish, it can be anything you want within reason. But when I am all done, I am going to export the file. And by the way, I have not mentioned, but you should be saving as you work. I should have been saving as I work. If you don't save while you're working, you might lose your work. I can save while I'm working over here and save to my gallery, save and browser, all of that. This is also where I'm going to change the file name. So right now it's just called New Piscal. I'm going to call it Hoink GIF or uh, let's say Hoink Pixel Art. Not a very exciting name, but if you put your name in the file name, then I will know that it's your work, and that's really helpful. So I appreciate when people use their names in their file names. To save it for turning in, you will go to export, change the resolution to be 10 times scale, 320 by 320 pixels. You can make it bigger than that, but don't make it smaller than that. That's a good size. If you export it at 32 by 32, which is the native size, it's going to be itty bitty teeny weeny. You won't be able to use it for anything. Once you have that file size set, you click download, and we're making sure it's a GIF loop repeatedly. Click download, and it will save that file to your computer. Hit OK. And that's it. That's what you're going to turn in. Um, hope that this is fun for you. I think it's a really fun project. And if you have any questions, as always, shoot me an email, shoot me a message, and we'll get it figured out.